If you haven't noticed, a lot of rose palettes have launched recently from all of my favorite brands. So I thought I'd do a video ranking, very roughly ranking by the way, all of these rose palettes from worst to best. Now please keep in mind these are just my opinion. When I do my rankings, I take into consideration how my experience with the formula as well as whether or not I like the color story and how often I plan on using these. So this is all very personal. There is not a palette that I do not like in this video. Honestly, all of them are great. But for one reason or the other, I might like one a little bit more than the other. But I can tell you right now, all seven of the palettes that I'm mentioning in today's video, if you're planning on picking them up because you're living, breathing, dying for the color story, you'll be okay. I think you will like it. All of these but one palette have their own individual review, but I've covered this, tried this, and given my thoughts on all of these palettes so far. So if you want more in-depth thoughts, just search the name of the palette and my name, Morgan Turner, and you will find the details of that. But let's get into it. Yeah, are we sick of rose tones? Yeah. Would I like to see more palettes that are not rose? Sure. Do I wear rose palettes a lot? And am I living, breathing for this makeup look? Yes. So I may talk my crap, but I do love rose tone. <laughs> so let's start off with my least favorite rose palette that has launched recently. And it's not bad, you guys. I just don't like the color story. This is the Melt Cosmetics Gemini 2 palette. And honestly, the quality on this is really, really nice. You'll see there's an additional olive section here as well. There's a lot of mattes and two shimmers here. So the reason that I don't like this is I feel like it's just too grungy for me. It is not my style. But if this is your style, like I said, the quality will be fantastic, which is great because sometimes melt can be inconsistent. So personally, why I do not like it is because both of the shimmers in here are so, so dark. So if I want to get dimension or reflect off of a look, it almost is going to always have to be smoky. I also find that their mattes run really dark on the skin compared to what you see in the pan. I've used this a few times. Honestly, I've really liked it, but it definitely has to be for when I'm going for a certain deeper smokier look like today I have a lot of brightness on my eyelid that's typically what I like this doesn't contain it so of all of the rose tone palettes this is my least favorite color story it's not the worst quality in this bunch but it's definitely the color story that I plan on reaching for the least number six is the artist couture supreme mauves palette now this one is less about the color story but I'm not in love with the quality here it's not bad quality I'm definitely able to make it work I'm able to create looks that I like but it's just not the best quality for the price points if you ask me the mattes in here are fine it is the shimmers in here that I find to be a little bit drier and messy I like a creamy shimmer that goes on with ease these were kind of a mess especially this shade the shade and the shade they will fall all over your face if you don't use a glitter glue or if you apply it with a brush so you just need to be careful I mean I'm even seeing a mess from this shade right here it's just not quality that matches up with the price but here's the thing I love the color story of this I think it is so beautiful I have enjoyed every single look that I've come up with this one has a row that runs a little bit more purpley a row that runs a little bit warmer and a row that runs a little cooler which I really really do enjoy and I've loved the looks that I've come up with so overall it is a palette that I do plan on reaching for more for the melt just because I will like the looks more but the journey to get there I am not as pleased by if that makes sense it's just the shimmers in here that just aren't where they should be or where I would like them to be. Number five is the Sigma New Mod Palette. I think that this color story is so stunning. I would probably say of all the palettes that I'm talking today, this one has my favorite color story. And I don't know, I think this one is really pretty. It runs a little bit cooler. It's just not as good quality as the ones I'm going to mention after this. But color story wise, it's one of my favorites here. You have more of a neutral side, more mauve more purple. I think it's really well curated. That is one of Sigma's strengths here. The mattes can be a little bit tough to work with, but other than that, I do enjoy this palette a lot. But I would say, to me, this Artist Couture formula is the worst of the sponge, and this one is up next in terms of the worst quality. But like I said, it is still good quality. I'm just, I'm messing with the big dogs in this <laughs> video. We have a lot of my top, top, top favorite brands, and I just can't put that one over the top. The next one, number four, is honestly I'm surprised. 
I thought that this would rank towards the bottom, but I've been enjoying this thoroughly. This is the NARS Summer Unrated Palette. I wasn't even going to pick this up when it first launched. That is how dead set against this palette that I was. Now in terms of how this runs against other NARS palettes, this is extremely underwhelming. It is just the same NARS eyeshadow palette rearranged that has been relaunched multiple times over again, which is why I didn't order this. But then, you know, the Sephora sale comes and I become a monster. So I did pick this up, you know, add to cart. It's that easy. It shows up. This shade is very breakable though. I wouldn't be surprised if you order this online if it comes shattered. And it's just like not being pressed back in. That is very annoying because it's one of the essential and prettiest shades in this palette. But anyways, this palette, extremely boring, but the quality, it's just a good, solid, workable palette. The colors are really beautiful. If you just want a rosy look, you're gonna get it with this. It is a great basic palette. Does it stand out in my collection of my palettes? No. You know, there's nothing unique about this, but quality is really great. It's kind of that palette, if this shade wasn't so dang messy, that I'd want to travel with because it has those great essential colors. So I have been enjoying my time with this. I'm not heart eyes for it, but I, it's just one of those things where even though it's so boring, it's because it's so good and you keep reaching for it because at the end of the day, I am boring. So I really have been enjoying this. And if you feel this is a color story that you're going to enjoy, a palette that you are going to get a lot of use out of, you will really enjoy the quality here. And it will be a palette that you might be surprised at how often you reach for. So I, I don't regret this purchase, but I do recommend maybe getting it at a discount. Let's not pay full price. NARS is expensive, but if you can get it at a discount, find a discount code, sign up for some email, whatever, whatever. I think it's worth it. All right, number three. I was unsure of whether or not to put this in this video, but at the end of the day, it's a rose palette. So <laughs> we are talking about the Bridgerton eyeshadow palette, Mothership, Belle of the Ball. Now, am I biased in this rankings? Yes. This is a Pat McGrath palette that is themed by Bridgerton. So I do plan on using it a lot. I do enjoy the color story, but again, it's one of those things where does it stand out in what the brand has launched on its own? No, okay? You can get a lot better from the brand. But individually, as I'm looking at it against these other rose palettes, slight cheating because it's not fully rose, but it's a dang good palette, okay? It's this shade right here that's really pushing it at number three. You put this all over the crease, you put this in the outer corner, you put this on the lid, and this is what dreams are made of in terms of a pink glam eye for me. Your girl loves sparkle. I'm going to use this palette a lot if I'm standing it up against these other palettes. This shade is really creamy and beautiful. Again, the quality is what dreams are made of. Yeah, you have this fun green pop, which honestly is so beautiful. And then you have this, this is fine. I will talk my crap on this against other Pat McGrath palettes, but it is still a beautiful, beautiful rose palette. And the look that I can get from this is top notch. Number two, number one and two actually were neck and neck for me, but I just had to go by value, which, which is what put this at number two. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Dreams Luxury Palette. I always talk about how terrible the value is with these Charlotte Tilbury palettes. They are so, so expensive for this minuscule amount of product. But when Charlotte Tilbury does it good, man, does she do it good. This is one of the best formulations that you can get your hands on. So right now I have this on my eyes. I have this in the outer half of my crease. I didn't go in with that dark shade. And then I have the darkest shade really kind of smoking it out along my lower lash line as well. And then I have this covering the inner half of the lid. And then a little bit of this popped in the center. These mattes blend like butter. They are so pigmented, they blend out easily. They're one of those formulations where I could do a whole look with multiple levels of depth with this one shade. That is how high quality it is. This shimmer is so beautiful. It's gonna look so stunning on those of you with mature lids who still like that ethereal glow. And then of course you have this shade right here, which is beautiful and extra and glimmery. So I cannot say a bad thing about this palette other than the value is not the greatest but this is one of Charlotte Tilbury's best eyeshadow palettes she's ever launched. I would definitely say top three, so I'm obsessed with this one. I love the eye look that I have today. Is it basic? Yes, but is it everything that I want? Pink quad? Yes.
I love it. I love, love, love the way that my makeup looks today because of this quad. All right, leaving that to number one, which again, was fighting with Charlotte Tilbury, but it's a lot better value. And that is going to be the Patrick Ta Major Dimension Eyeshadow Palette, the second one. So this is the rose one. This one also is coming shattered. So wait until they come into store if you want to order this. But this is what my dreams are made of as well because of the extra glimmery dimensional shades. I think this creates the most beautiful rose tone look. Now, if you don't like rose tones, run far away from this palette because you're not getting much else with this. The looks aren't going to be as diverse. You know, you can get a dark rosy smoky eye, you can get a light everyday eye, maybe a pop of gold, but it's it's gonna be rose, you know what I mean? So if you don't like that, I don't even know why you're watching this video to begin with, but <laughs> it's a rose, rose tone palette. I didn't wear it today because the last tutorial that I posted, my everyday makeup routine, I actually use this, so that should tell you I cannot put this down. I'm even using it in my everyday makeup tutorial on that look that I did, by the way, so, so pretty. So yeah, I love the quality of this. The mattes are super buttery and smooth. Really dimensional shades. Sometimes, you know, maybe I want to tone it down a bit, but it's still fine. I really am enjoying this. And just looking at the layout here in front of me, this is the one that excites me the most. It's the one that I feel inspired the most to use, that I want to play with, that I know I'm going to love the look that I get with it every time. So that is what put it at number one, my most favorite rose palette of the moment. So let me know down below which of these palettes you have tried and how you would rank them. And give me the details. Tell me what you like and what you don't like. Do you agree? with me. I feel so hypocritical because I do talk trash about all of these rose tone palettes coming out. <laughs> I love the way that they look. I am the problem. I am the reason that they keep coming out with rose palettes because I keep buying them and using them and talking about how great they are. <laughs> Are you the problem as well? Please tell me. And that's why, you know, I do get a lot of you asking me, why do they keep coming out with rose palettes? We're so sick of it. Because people buy it. And that's that, you know. They're not going to come out with things that people aren't going to buy. It's all about the monte. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for taking time out of your day and hanging out with me. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.